I am Edwin A. Walker presenting this film. I introduce to you a film of criminal acts of atrocity and depravity. I make no apologies for this film. The film is a documentation of communist brutality. The pictures speak for themselves. Treachery and murder continued as we internationalized Berlin 17 years ago, up to Korea 10 years ago and 7,000 miles away, and now to Cuba today, only 90 miles from the United States. How can this happen? I can tell you how it can happen from my personal experience. We were not allowed to win in Korea. I was in command of an infantry regiment of 3,000 men in combat. I was told that I could not attack the enemy without it, with anything larger than a platoon of 30 men without getting permission from higher headquarters. Similar limitations were placed on every echelon of command. The entire army in Korea of three quarters of a million men could not attack with anything larger than a battalion of 800 men without permission from Washington, D.C., over 7,000 miles away. Three quarters of a million men under arms in Korea were paralyzed, but this was still not enough to protect the enemy. We then had to accept his terms that we would not shoot at him. Week after week, as late as 10 o'clock at night, I awaited orders from higher headquarters to tell my men on the front line that tomorrow was not a shooting day, and then that they would not shoot and shoot only if they would, were shot at. This went on for weeks across the entire front as communists dominated the Panmunjom conference table. Our soldiers sat and watched the enemy every other day, rebuild the bunkers and fortifications we had destroyed the day before, replace his ammunition, bring up his reserves, and get closer to our trenches for a night attack. This film was made to be shown to our armed forces. In line with censoring that is going on, it was never released to be seen. Why? Because the film is too truthful and too critical of the communist conspiracy. The net result is that we conspire against our soldier and his training in order to accommodate the enemy. The film, like many others, was censored to conform to a more conciliatory approach. I believe that any lad old enough to bear arms for his country has a right to know what he is facing and how his enemy will deal with him. Further than this, it is his commander's obligation to him to see that he does know. Do you realize how far-reaching and insidious this conspiracy has become? Recently, while in command of the 24th Division in Germany, I was under orders which directed me to place hundreds of men in readiness to move to the Congo. There they would be fighting the anti-communists, as many of our soldiers today are doing under the United Nations. The rest of the division was on continuous alert, in readiness to move to the east-west border to fight the communists. There you have it. American soldiers out of the same U.S. division, one fighting the anti-communists and one fighting the communists. These two soldiers are fighting each other. We have an army that must stand by a paralyzed by our national policy while it watches a German lad die at the Berlin Wall. We have a great navy equally paralyzed in the Caribbean while it watches Russia arm her Cuban bastion with missiles and we make plans for the evacuation of our Guantanamo naval base. In this picture, you're not looking at a battlefield. You're not looking at conventional warfare. You are looking at Cold War atrocity, well-planned and far behind the front lines. It is not a part of the combat or hot war. Does it apply to you? I believe you can answer this question yourself. I will give you six important points in this picture that you are concerned with in forming your opinions about the Cold War that surrounds you. One, civilians and soldiers alike are starved, tortured, and murdered, all alike. Two, other races, not Russian, are equally effective and efficient as trained communist beasts. Three, communist trained soldiers 
are in charge everywhere you look. Men that have been brainwashed. Four, the human mind of any race changed to that of a beast, acts like a beast. Five, if you are friendly and accommodating to a communist, you are a communist. Six, once a communist, you have no choice except to join in with communist acts of violence, as you will see in this picture. Out of the darkness of communism, the truth is slowly coming to light. We are beginning to see the hidden motives of communism. We are beginning to see the methods the communists use. These methods are nothing new. Brutality is as old as sin. But these methods have become the international policy of communism. The country behind this is Soviet Russia. We no longer discuss whether communism is good or bad. It is a Soviet scheme, thriving on human misery. Throughout the world, in Asia, in Europe, Wherever you find communism, you find violence, death, slave labor, men reduced to the level of beasts of burden. Why even call it communism? Just call it the method of Soviet conquest. One of the founders of Soviet Russia, Nikolai Lenin, said that any means is justified if it serves the Soviet cause. There is a streak of insanity in something that causes this. The communists fake the uniforms of other nations. Brutality is an instrument of politics. Men are arrested and disappear for a time, and then reappear mouthing false confessions. The Soviet-type state is a prison. And behind the walls of communism, we are beginning to see oriental terror. These scenes came from behind the Iron Curtain. The Japanese uniform is false. You can see the Soviet quirk of mind. The political philosophy of communism at work. Soviet Russia is using communism to follow in the footsteps of Genghis Khan. Today, the Red Death Cart is familiar in Chinese streets. America is called an enemy, and doubting voices are quickly silenced. A sinister cloud is forming in the east. It threatens the world. Mass murder is a weapon of red politics. Human life is cheaper than the Soviet ruble. We in America cannot believe this is really happening. But it is happening. Day after day, in a dark forest in Poland, in a rice field in China, in a silent valley in Korea. While the leaders of communism continue to use the same old double talk. You've heard them, and we've caught on to this kind of talk. They twist words around to give a different meaning. They rearrange facts to suit their purpose. They state a lie as a fact and then keep repeating the lie as if they had proved its truth. They call it dialectics. Communist talk is a cheap word game. When you hear communist talk, remember what Lenin said. Any means is justified. If a lie serves the cause, they will lie. A communist has no conscience. These men will lie, cheat, or murder without the slightest twinge of conscience. They take